Welcome to Track Industries YouTube channel. Today we are putting a kit set into a C1 pump or Davies 500. Okay, here we have the contents of a C1 kit set. At the top we have two leather cups, then we have the four valve posts. Then we have two sets of four valve washers, we have the valve springs, then we have four of the valve rubbers. We have a set of gland packing, then we have a set of four valve cap gaskets, and then we have the two end gaskets. Okay, now we're going to strip down the head, so we will need to take the air chamber off the top, we'll need to take the end cover off, and we'll also need to expose the suction cap and the suction side valves down the bottom here. So we're going to take the air chamber off first, so just with These can often be quite tight, particularly if your pump's been outside and there's a little bit of rust or aging around these. Well, that one there. Always pays to check the, quote, the condition of the bolts too. Sometimes they will need to be replaced. If they do, please contact your local supplier. Now a little bit of persuasion to get the heat moving. So there's the air chamber. Just check the condition of the bottom of that, make sure there's no major rust and there's nothing that can leak from there. The top in here you'll have the two gaskets, take those and take those away. From there now we'll move on to the end cover. Be aware when you're undoing these two that they're now entering the part which has water in, so chances are you are going to get some water leakage coming from out here. So one, two, three, and four. And again the end cover can take a bit of persuasion to get off sometime, particularly if you're dealing with older pumps. There we have the O-ring, when it first comes from the factory it will have an O-ring. So let's just put that to the side. Now let's move on to the suction side and removing that. Now this is a bolt so it helps to just unsecure that end. Go. So there's the bolt, there's the clamp, just check the condition of those, make sure that they are all in good condition. 
check. And now we have the two caps for the suction side. These can often be stuck in reasonably well, so sometimes it can take a bit of persuasion to remove these. Okay, and for these bottom suction valves, you may need to get a bit of a screwdriver in or something to wean that off. Now, as soon as you get that off, check, make sure it's in good condition. The side, take the gaskets out, they can go away. Same on the other side. As this is a suction side, you'll get quite a bit of water. Check that that surface is fine. Again, take the gasket out. There we go. Okay, now we need to remove the plunger assembly. So the first thing we need to do is where the plunger rod attaches to the crosshead in this back end here, there is a nut, which is a lock nut which holds it in. So first thing we need to do is get in and just loosen. So what we're going to do is we're going to wind that all the way out, okay? And then we're going to use that to help us get the whole pumping system or the whole plunger assembly out. Right, now we're going to remove, so there's the plunger assembly in there. We're going to take the socket, we'll attach it onto there and start to unwind. Now I'm going to check from the other end to make sure that I'm turning the whole plunger assembly and not just the nuts. And what we want to do is we want to unwind it all the way out of the crosshead. Now we keep on going. And I will check, oh, still attached, by moving the pulley. And that feels about, there we go, we're detached. Okay, so now that we've got it, the plunger rod is no longer attached to the crosshead. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that this is still, the lock nut is still moving freely. screwdriver just come in and move that whole plunger assembly forward in the head a little bit more of a lever right to the end and now as you can see from here we start seeing the assembly coming out so I'm just going to push that forward now once I get it here I will take the lock nut off also the water baffle can come off. Once that's there, I can pull that whole assembly out. And there we have the plunger assembly. Let's replace the gland packing, which is in behind here. So first thing I need is the gland spanner. So that just goes through. I lock that onto the hole. I turn until I can get it moving. Unwind. Yeah. So that is the gland nut. Always check the threads, make sure that's in good condition. And then we have the gland follower. Okay, Make sure that that's a round hole in there and not an oval hole, which sometimes happens in older pumps. Then in here we actually have the gland packing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my a screwdriver and I'm just going to lever these out. Now there's often three to four pieces in here. Make sure you remove all of them. Okay, now we're going to remove the valve assemblies from inside the suction side. We'll just film down here. It's exactly the same as when we're removing them on the delivery side. So, just a different spanner head in. I'm just going to loosen Off. 
sequence that's in there and why. So then we should bring out, we have the valve stem, just check the condition of that. We have the valve washer, we have the spring, make sure that's in good condition. Then digging in deeper, we will have another valve washer and then the actual valve rubber itself. Then we're going to repeat the same process on here. So undoing that, and then there are another two under this top assembly here. Okay. Once you've got those valve assemblies out, it pays just to have a quick check and a feel of the actual valve seats themselves. Make sure there's no corrosion or there's no damage there, particularly on the suction side. If the pump can suck air through, it'll prefer to suck air than it actually is to water. So make sure you check both those seats. Also, on the delivery side, make sure the delivery side is looking good as well. Be aware on the Davies pumps that the on the delivery side that they have small slots cut out of the dark of the valve seat so that it can just suck a little bit of air on the tires. But that is only on the delivery side, not on the suction side. Okay, now let's take the plunger assembly apart. So, first thing we've got to do, just check the plunger rod. Also, when I'm taking this apart, I want to hold the plunger rod itself firmly. I like to use a set of soft uh, jaws. If you don't have soft jaws, a couple of pieces of wood work quite well. But I don't want to scar this plunger rod. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen off these nuts. Sure, it's nice and it might be held. And there, there's always there, there should be Loctite which is holding them in. So I want to make sure that that comes across well. So from there, I'm just going to unwind this assembly. And from there, give it a little bit of pressure, split it all apart. So from there, we have the plunger center, the two plunger cups, which will have the plunger inners, or the plunger outers, in the middle and they just need to be removed so we can put the new cups in. There we go. Once I've, once I've taken the plunger assembly apart, always check the conditions of all your parts. So these are the two plunger ends and the plunger center. Make sure they're in good condition. Okay. From there, we're going to take the first plunger end, which goes up. If you don't need to replace this, keep it in condition because this will keep everything nicely worked out together. That comes into there. We're going to take the new cup, wind that on. We take the plunger center, it slides on there. Now, the other new cup. Wind that on. Then the other plunger end locks in. Now, check your plunger nuts. It's going to wind on there. Now use the trusty socket set to wind everything nice and tight. 
and I want to lock that up. It needs to be reasonably firm. It doesn't matter if you can get a little bit of movement. We don't want too much movement, particularly with the tulip cups. If these are tightened too hard, what happens is that will flare out and will, can cause them to break prematurely. So we want just a little bit of movement in there. Okay. Once that's locked on, I'm going to take a little bit of Loctite and dab it in the Dab it in threads, lock that down, and then bind it up nice and tight, making sure that everything is nice and tight and firm. Right, now that we've got the assembly back together, we're just going to take that, I'm just going to put this in and feel for the going through where it goes the gland plate and what I'll do is I'm just going to wind it through here so I feel it emerge from the other side so it comes out here. Okay, now that I've got my plunger assembly back in the housing, it's time to put the new gland packing in and around it. So what we're going to do, we take the gland packing What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck this in and around the plunger rod. So that goes in there and I'm going to use my screwdriver to press that down in and around. Making sure that you get it well bedded in. Now to help, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gland follower, put the gland nut on, and I'm going to push that down so that that pushes the gland packing right down all the way into the bottom of your gland plate. So make sure that that gives plenty of room to put more packing in there. So once I've got that well down, I will undo it again and repeat the process for the next piece. Take that out. So now we get our next piece. This goes down again. Now, what really helps is when I put these gland packings in, I want to stagger where the ends are. So if I put this in that way for the first time, so the first piece goes there, I want to make sure that I have that following another place around there so that we don't get all of the end pieces in an alignment. We want them staggered around so that you don't get water bypassing through the gap. And again, just slowly working, pressing that all the way in. This is probably the most frustrating or difficult part of this whole assembly, is just getting this in. Normally when we're making the pumps, we will assemble all this gland packing in the actual gland plate, out on a bench and a table. That's a lot simpler. But a lot of you out in the field will not have that ability. And now again, we wind this and we get that going through and down. Now it's a simple process of doing that until you can no longer get any more in. So get as many in as you possibly can. Every kit comes with about six pieces. You should be able to get four to five pieces in each time. Okay, now we've got the gland packing renewed. What we're going to do is reattach your water baffle and also the lock nut in. So first we do is just put on the water baffle, slip that on. Now, now we take the lock nut, so this is the plunger rod lock nut. And we're going to just put that on and we want to go all the way 
to the end to make sure that I've got enough adjustment there when I need it. So wind that all the way through. There we go. Now I bring, I use the pulley and I want to bring the cross head which is sitting in here as forward as I possibly can and I push those through so that there's connection there. Now I'm going to take the spanner, put that on the end there and I want to start winding it into the cross head now. And I'll just use this to make sure I'm getting a good connection and winding it through. Check that the whole assembly moves backwards and forwards. Now it's important once I've got that seated in quite well is I want to cycle it backwards and forwards and make sure that the cups are dis uh, disappearing and not sticking outside the housing. Okay, so what I want to do is make sure that the cups are fully seated inside the actual liner here. So I'm going to wind this all the way in until the cups disappear into the liner at the furthest stroke. So that's there. So I'm just going to cycle it backwards and forwards. I want to cycle it the whole way forward and I want to make sure when I check that it's not contacting at the end or bumping into the, <coughs> the gland assembly. So cycling it backwards and forwards and I can see that that's disappearing, it's seated in the head. I'm going to go a little bit further. So there, so that that's all looking good. Right, the last thing I want to do on the plunger assembly is I want to make sure that that lock, that lock nut is nice and tight. So I'm just going to take that into there and make sure that that's a, a really good snug tight fit and binding up really well against that crosshead there so it's not going to come free. Right, now let's put the new assemblies in, or new valve assemblies into the valve. So we'll start with the suction at the bottom here. So we have first the new valve rubber, the valve washer, the spring, the final washer, and the valve post. So make sure they're all in that area. Yeah. From now, we're just going to Put those in and we want to line that up with the hole. Screw that in nice and tight. And tighten everything. Once we've got the new valve assemblies in, so we've got the suction side done there. I've also done exactly the same on the delivery side at the top. First thing we're going to do is put the new gaskets in, make sure they're seated nicely in the housing there. That's it. Now from there we're going to take the valve caps, putting them on there. And two. Now from there, we're going to take the valve clamp. So not helpful if I do this. Making sure that's there. And we take the valve clamp bolt. And insert that through, right through the head. And then on the other side, put the bolt, or put the nut, and tighten those two together for a start. And once I've got those sort of finger tightened, and 
put the pressure on. Make sure you get these nice and tight. Again, on suction side, one of the big problems that you'll have when you're trying to actually get um, the pump up and running is that if you have an air leak on here, it will prefer to suck air rather than actually sucking the water. So make sure you always get that nice and tight. Right, let's reassemble this now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to just put this end cover on. I match the holes to the on the gasket and I'm going to match those onto there so just taking the first one loosely doing that up and take the next one and the next one Final one. And from there, we'll take and from here we just tighten everything up. Now, just cycle the pump backwards and forwards, making sure that the plunger assembly is not contacting either the end plate or the plunger assembly or the gland assembly at the far end. So that's cycling through its motion, not a problem. So now once we've done that, let's tighten up the last two. Give them all a good nudge. Okay, now the final part is reattaching this top, the air chamber on the top. So we're going to set the gaskets in place, make sure they're nice and snug in. Take the air chamber, line that up. Now, taking the bolts, go through one, two, other side. Final one. Um, two. Right, so from here, all we need to do is to take these and just give them a the family decent tight up. Snap that nice and down.
final snug. Make sure that everything is nice and tight. Right, once we've done that, so everything's tight, I go through a final check. It always pays to make sure that every bolt is tight that you've gone through. Cycle the pump through its stroke. Make sure that there's no connection. You're not feeling any, any contact with either the end plate or the gland plate. Once you've done that, should be good to go.